this video. We're doing a $100 challenge. Oh God. I mean, look at that face. It's a face only a mother could love. In Vietnam's mega seafood city. Look at how big those eyeballs are. They're bigger than my eyes. All right, right here, he's showing me. Oh, these look really interesting. Are you guys like my Vietnamese wife? Whenever my wife sees like endangered crabs or rare lobsters with David Attenborough talking and beautiful BBC footage, she's like, God, I'm so hungry. Right now we are in the city of Vung Tau. This is a two hour drive from Ho Chi Minh City. This place is on the coast and it is gorgeous. People come here all the time for weekend vacations, quick getaways, and for the fresh seafood. Right now we're in a little market called Samui. I'm told that was the right pronunciation and not racist. This market is legendary. All the way up and down this street on both sides, people have tons of fresh seafood. You can see these little containers with the oxygenators, the bubblers keeping the fish alive, crustaceans, clams, snails. There's dried fish, there's cooked fish. All the seafood you see here, you can actually take it home or they can cook it on the spot and you can eat it right here on the street. That is what I plan to do. Right here we have a variety of various tentacled creatures. We have octopuses over there, medium-sized squid, and then really big squids over here. That is a pretty big squid for Vietnam. Look at how big those eyeballs are. They're bigger than my eyes. They're kind of beautiful. I'm getting lost in them. Sorry, my wife is right here. She has good eyes too, but she doesn't have squid eyes. This right here is actually not a squid. This is a cuttlefish. And he's saying it's still alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. These cuttlefish are known to change color. Wow, so cool and a little bit creepy. All right, right here he's showing me the, oh. Oh, all right, right here we have a spiny lobster. You gotta be careful, because the antenna right here will absolutely rip your skin off. All right, I'm gonna put him back. Right here, this is a shellfish section. We have snails, and we have a variety of clams. If you come over here, these look really interesting, because you can actually see them moving. Take a look at that. It's so curious. I should let it climb on the lens. If I tickle it, will it go back inside? Oh. Oh, yes, it has sense danger. Now it is fully closed. It's been traumatized and it's gonna need years of therapy before it literally comes out of its shell once more. I'm certainly gonna have to try this out later. Right here we've come to the dry seafood section and they have a lot to choose from. First of all, this is a tiny little blue crab and you can see in order to eat it, you have to take the head off the top and then you can fry the rest. And then it's coated in a sticky fish sauce kind of a glaze. I'm gonna try that out right now. Mainly crunchy, almost to a fault. It's kind of like delicious, sweet fried fingernails. If you really enjoyed eating your fingernails as a kid, this is like the next level. Mm. The body has more crevices, more places for that sugary fish sauce to gather. Very nice. Mm. Then right here, this is actually a big surprise to me. This is stingray. So they've stripped down the stingray and they've done a similar kind of preparation for it where it's been kind of cooked or fried and then they apply a lot of that sweet fish sauce base to it. You said I could just grab one off and try it out? Ow. Seafoody in a good way. Chewy, sweet. It's almost like dry squid. I love it. These are all great Vietnamese drinking foods, but this is not going to help me get to $100. The same location has a bunch of seafood. I'm going to pick out a few options now and have my first course. Let's get to it. Now, we saw this one already over here. That is going to be first on our plate. These are Vietnamese scallops, and what I like about them is that they're open right now. Oh, maybe I don't like that. Maybe that means they're dead. Wait, hold on. Oh, they're all dead. Okay, I'm told they're all dead already. <laughs> I thought they were alive and trying to get a gulp of air. So that is the inside. It looks kind of gnarly. So I'm I'm gonna get a bunch of these. And then right here we have the sweet snail. You can see it looks so delicious and it's big and juicy and it's got big plump white meat. So we're doing scallops, we're gonna do snails. Let's get it, let's, uh, let's do it. Straight away these snails are getting boiled in hot water and these snails are gonna get steamed. Right here we have the scallop cleaning station. Oh, looking very clean. She effortlessly rips the scallops in half. And right now she's kind of cutting away the extra waste parts of each scallop, which I appreciate. Now this part is very critical and you might not realize it happens unless you're in the kitchen, but she's gonna use a scissors to cut the end off of each snail. You're gonna see soon why this is very important. The next move for the snails, we got oil and lemongrass in a hot wok and then here we have coconut milk, fresh from the uh, can. A little bit of normal milk. Here we got sugar or MSG or salt or maybe all three. Oh, she puts in a red chili. Mmm, that is a delicious creamy base for our snails. Oh, it is finally time. The snails are primed and ready to go. Boom, they will get absolutely soaked in that <laughs> She's trying to figure out how to get out. All right, this is getting a little bit awkward to film. There's not a lot of real estate in here. Okay, she's putting in coriander. That's nice. Can you see it from here? Not really. Okay, but the point is the snails have hit that sweet coconut milk. Soon they're going to be hot and ready to go. I'll meet you at the table. 
course one, just over $23 for all you see here, which seems a little bit more expensive than I was expecting, except that this is a lot of snails and these look delicious. We're gonna get to those in a moment. I'm gonna start with this right here. Now I ordered eight scallops, but they gave me four. And that is because they doubled up the scallop meat on each shell. We have scallion oil, we have peanuts, and that has been grilled. Actually, it was cleaned and then boiled and then grilled. So you definitely know it's cooked all the way through, which is good because again, the shell was open. Do we remember? We remember that the shell was open? Let's try it out. itself very delicious it's super sweet it's got a great texture to it not overcooked but you mix that supple softness of the scallop with the crunchy peanut a little oily from the scallion it's a wonderful combination usually people wouldn't sit out here on the street we request especially to come sit outside here which is nice because look at these snails right here they're alive and right here their ancestors are um well, not so alive anymore. So I like to send a message to the live snails. Don't mess with me. I am not to be crossed. So right here, I'm gonna stab it with a giant toothpick. Oh, and that is a healthy amount of meat. And then let's get the poopy bottom too. Here we have kind of like a sticky, sweet fish sauce. I'm gonna lather that up. Ooh, that looks good. Let's try it out. Okay, that maybe could have steamed a little bit longer. The digestive system of the snail was really gooey and still tasted somewhat room temp. The meat was perfect. It's just kind of rubbery, chewy, fun to eat. Overall, good. I would say eat the amount of poop you feel comfortable eating. Don't let people pressure you. There's a lot of peer pressure these days to do things with your mouth you don't want to do. Only consent to what you're comfortable to. Yes, I'm talking about snails still. Right here, our final dish. So these are the snails we saw her cut with the scissors. This is in a rich coconut broth full of sugar, lemongrass, MSG, salt, everything that makes life worth living. The reason she had to cut it so that you could suck the snail out of there. So now there's like a straw or a vacuum effect. Let's try it out. Mm, it's so good. Oh God, that cream. I just want to eat the cream alone. Mm, it's so sweet and delicious. It's like a thick, rich, creamy coconut with a little bit of sweet evaporated milk flavor plus a hint of lemongrass, just fresh and infused and traveling up your nostrils as the coconut cream is traveling down your throat. Laughing at me. <laughs> Did I suck it from the wrong side? Maybe this side. <laughs> Victory. They're slippery, they're a little bit gooey. The amazing thing is we just saw it crawling around a moment ago. Now it's here and it's being sucked into my mouth. I think we're doing pretty well with our mission to spend $100 on seafood today. This is just some simple shellfish to start out with, but now we're gonna get something much more substantial. The seafood tour must continue. Right here, a lot more options. This is a bundle of razor clams. Usually when I see them like this, they're dead already, but you can see they're moving. Like, look at this thing. They're kind of squirming, writhing out of their shell, trying to peek out. I know in the wild, they're not usually bundled like that, but evidently that's perhaps how they get around. Or maybe they're mating, or maybe they're just disgusting. I have no idea. We're gonna get some of these razor clams, but I also wanna get, this is a cuttlefish. Here's something unique about this place that I maybe didn't explain yet. Buying the seafood and having it cooked is two separate things. A lot of people get stuff here and take it away, but if you want to eat here, you have to pay a little bit extra. I'm curious how much this is going to cost. All right, we're putting the cuttlefish on the scale. The $480,000, it's a little bit over 20 bucks for the cuttlefish, not bad, but we also have to pay for someone to cook it too. And could we have this one? So this right here is $50,000. Honestly, it's just above $2. Pretty inexpensive, and they're still very active. We have come to the cooking area, a separate kitchen, and they are going to dismantle this cuttlefish right here. Cuttlefish will be prepared two ways. This is a very unique part. It looks like a big piece of plastic. It's kind of like a backbone or like a a tendon that is inside the cuttlefish. So definitely we're not eating that. And we have our razor clams right here that'll be stir fried with morning glory. Right here, the cuttlefish is about to get steamed. And the razor clams are definitely no longer alive. The cuttlefish has shrank substantially. Oh, cuttlefish is hitting the grill. Right here, they have a little fan to keep the grill hot. I love it. The cuttlefish being put into the saute sauce. Ooh, that looks orange, red, spicy, and delicious. After steaming, the razor clams are cleaned one by one. The meat is removed from the shell. So right here we have the razor clam bodies, we have morning glory, there's salt, sugar, MSG, chili sauce, garlic, vinegar, so many spices inside, it smells absolutely delicious. Course two right here, it looks stunning. For the raw ingredients, it was about just over $22, but for them to cook it at a separate kitchen, that is just over $5. Let's try this out. This is just kind of plain steamed with ginger cuttlefish. A bit basic, salt, ginger, that's all there is to it, really. You need some of this sticky, salty, spicy fish sauce. Mm. Oh yeah, that's what makes it pop. It's really chewy, but very fun to chomp on, and a unique texture. It also depends on what body part you get, because that was a leg, but this is part of the head. It's very thick. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a dip, try it out. Mm -hmm. It's so medium, it's so delicious. Wife tax. 
satisfied white. Here we have the grilled version. They have what they call a saute sauce on there. You can see it turns it a beautiful shade of kind of orangey red. It looks spicy, it looks fiery. Mm. Oh yeah, a delicious saute sauce. It's a little chewier and less moist. Oh my God. For a cuttlefish, this is like a dark macabre nightmare. For me, it's a dream. Last of all, we have this right here. This is a very common preparation in Vietnam. We have Morning Glory being sauteed in the wok, but then you have these little guys in there too. It looks like they got a suntan on their head and then this part was never exposed to the sun. Who die for? There's garlic, there's chili sauce, there's MSG, there's sugar, there's savory, it's sweet. Razor clams are awesome. They have kind of a slightly chewy texture. It's not like eating a snail where it's really rubbery. Morning Glory is good too. I'm not a big vegetable guy, but when you roll around your vegetables in a wok with all those glorious flavors and you mix it with some delicious seafood, then I can take on some vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be emotional. So that is the end of course two. I only have enough room in my stomach for one more course. Financially, we are over halfway to our goal of $100. But I'm gonna have to pull out the nuclear option if we're gonna get to $100 in the next course. I'm gonna hit the streets again and see if there's something out there I haven't tried before. We have come to our final destination here. They have a few different unique seafood creatures I've not seen before. It's a tiger prawn by weight. It's even more expensive than the lobsters. Let's take a look why. Boom, that is a tiger prawn. That is about as fat as a shrimp is gonna get. You can see it. he's got little hands in the front, tiny little claws that are useless for attacking. So I'm gonna order a couple pounds of these. They also have this right here. This is something I've never seen before at a market here in Vietnam. Oh God, that is called a toadfish. I mean, look at that face. It's a face only a mother could love and even that Maybe not. It's got to be delicious. I don't know. So I'm going to ask them to grill a couple of these up as well. Is that going to get us to 100 bucks? Let's find out. Step one, dispatch the toadfish. That fish is going to be chopped into little pieces and soon it will be made into a curry. Oh, well, we've got some lemongrass being prepared for the curry. Right here we have the seasoning combination for our curry. We've got lemongrass, shallots, chilies, and onion plus fresh coconut milk. Right here, the secret ingredient, free mixed curry powder. Almost completely homemade. She just put in some saute sauce, a sugar, salt, MSG, and a little bit of pepper. We got a hot wok here with a little bit of garlic. Boom. And all those seasonings and all that fish goes inside. In with the fresh coconut milk right from the can. She'll continue mixing this up and that is basically it. We'll meet you at the table. Boom, and our final curry looks just like this. Take a look. We have the little fish parts in there. That is gonna be full of bones, so I will come back to that soon. We also have shrimp prepared two different ways, grilled and steamed. Let's see how it looks after I rip the head off. You gotta kinda twist it a little bit. That goo that comes out, that is the head butter. Now, some people like to suck the head. I'm not really a head sucking guy, but let me try it. Oh, it's pretty good. Right here, this is the tail. Simply peel the shell off smoothly, like so. And then that is what you're left with, a glorious, giant piece of tiger prawn. Right here we have a green chili sauce. It's gonna be the best bite. Mm. I've come a long way since eating popcorn shrimp at a Red Lobster as a 12 year old. Let's try some of this sauce. Oh, it's good, huh? Oh, yeah. It's delicious. I think one reason it's expensive is because they're alive when you get them. The great flavors just come from the freshness. They haven't done anything to it. They just put it in the steamer. Here, they just put it in the grill. Are you guys like my Vietnamese wife? Whenever my wife sees like endangered crabs or rare lobsters with David Attenborough talking and beautiful BBC footage, she's like, God, I'm so hungry. So it looks roughly the same. It feels a bit more firm. Give a little bit of hit of that sauce. Flavor tastes the same. The texture is just a bit harder, but not bad. Both very enjoyable. Right here we have our curry. I do love this sweet kind of coconut curry. This is the owner's recommendation. These fish, they kind of look like giant tadpoles. Let's try this out. Mm, the skin is kind of slimy. The meat is super flaky. It attracts flies. It's like an insanely flaky type of fish. I wonder if it's because of the way she prepared it because it got beat up a little bit in that pan. The sauce is very delicious. It's just a sweet, delicious, savory, rich curry. Mm. And actually, if you're wondering, that is what the bread is for. Oh, look at that. Curry on a fresh toasted bun mein. A little bit of fish in there. <laughs> Guys, I can't believe it. It's like out of this world delicious. My biggest takeaway from this place today is that these people are magicians in the kitchen. When you look at each kitchen, they look very humble. They have kind of minimal implements, minimal tools, but maximum flavor. The way they're so able to nonchalantly and quickly put together flavors that are like five-star quality, it's mind-blowing that that exists here. In a place that smells like fish, where people are handling seafood all day, man, when it's time to cook, they know absolutely what they're doing. This is our final seafood for the day. From here, we're gonna add up everything we ate and see if we broke $100. Boom. 
moment, we've come to the end of the video where we add up all the food we ate for today and see if I actually spent over $100. Now, I don't want you guys to think that this is a gimmick, the $100 thing that we do here, because oftentimes, I really try my best, like in Peru, where I try to spend $100 on street food, but I spent $10. But today, today, my friends, after adding everything up, it seems that I spent about $110 on seafood. So I did it, I hit my goal, but it was not easy to do. Depending on what you choose, seafood here in Vietnam is incredibly affordable. We essentially had three different meals, big enough for two people, with an average cost of about 35 to 40 bucks each. That's a really good deal. If you come to the city of Vung Tau, I suggest coming to this market. You can mingle with locals, check out the seafood, stroll around. I mean, what can be better than that? Anyways, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. All right, I need a seafood enema now. Ooh, I'm full.